I was so eager to get going today, I got the camera out and I just immediately started filming, not even thinking to record an intro. So here it is. Welcome to the first day of the Monaco Yacht Show. The Monaco Yacht Show is basically divided up into three sections as far as exhibitors are concerned. One, yachts, new yacht design, spec your new build, and completed used ready to go yachts for sale and charter. Two, technical equipment on show for new yacht builds. Three, toys. What toys owners might want to buy for the new toys. So I'll aim to divide my videos into these three sections, although there may be some overlap that cannot be avoided. Looks like Jerry Seinfeld's in town. This is his boat mocker. Well, let's say his boat's in town. Whether he's here or not is another question. Hope he's not trying to sell it already. There's uh, San Lorenzo badges all over it, which is obviously the shipbuilder. It's here as a, it's marketed as a 46 meter expedition which I assume is, uh, he's not for, it's not selling it, it's just, uh, they're just using it as a advertising. So you've got the crane on the show, that would be stowed when, it, when it's sea, but it's out just to show that it has it. It's an unusual color scheme as well. I would imagine that's 400 horsepower each. This yacht is actually a support vessel. So, theoretically, the owner never lives on board. This is, this is just for his helicopters and his uh, toys and his tenders and his speedboats and his jet skis. So they have this, this boat is a shadow boat. It just follows the big boat around. See, it's got a helicopter on top. Actually has a helipad and a hangar. Built by the Dutch shipbuilders, Damon. 69 meters, or 220, 225 feet. And uh, it actually, sits, it actually um, you can actually have 12 guests on it as well. And it has a 15 ton deck crane also has the ability uh, for water storage for a tender. Okay, so this is a MY St. David. This is an unusual one because it's actually registered technically in the UK, registered in the Isle of Man, in Douglas. You don't see that very often, even though Douglas is a type of uh, tax avoidance place, uh, but it's still rare to see. It's a Minardi, Minardi built, and uh, they've got it all set up you can see the tender stowed and you can see a couple of a couple of sunbeds out there and you can see down here uh, two sea bobs so these are I don't know whether you know I'd never seen them until I worked on yachts basically it's a little jet propelled device and you hold on to the back of it and, it, and you swim around without swimming <laughs> it's a 46 meter boat oh sorry no it's not it's 59 meter boat getting mixed up with the previous boat built in 2008 and it's uh, just under a thousand gross tons you can see right inside here it normally would be where the, where the tender would be but they've got it dressed up like a, it's a boss area 
So it's probably a place where they come and uh, you know sit and uh, get ready to go out to go ashore. You know, they have a little table there, usually put some hats on it, some refreshments, whatever. Uh, and so as the owner comes out, and there's boats waiting here. It's docked. They call the uh, swim platform, but it's you know it's where the um, it's where the boats leave, come and uh, arrive and leave from. So the boss will come out, put a hat on, take a bottle of water, wait for family members, etc. And then uh, also, if they're using it as a swim platform, then they can you know have a swim. And then when they're finished, they come inside. And there's a little, there'll be a little shower facility in there. Well, not necessarily little, but there'll be a shower, showering room in there as well, so they can take a shower. And this boat is billed as Project 783. Obviously, it's being used as a as a advertisement by the shipbuilders. And as you can see, it's 73 meter. There's all the details. This boat is actually called Oscar Fox. So I looked that up on the on an app called Marine Traffic. If you if you don't know about marine traffic, um, go go to uh, Apple the iTunes Store or whatever you get your apps from, and uh, check it out. It's basically it uses uh, the AIS, the Autom automatic identification system that yachts are required to have by law, and it uses that information to post the the location. I'm sure the yacht owners love it, <laughs> but it posts the location all over the world. And if you go to um, if you go to it, the app to, in the next few days, you'll see all the boats that are in Monaco. It's absolutely incredible the amount of boats that are showing up on AIS, and anything over 300 tons is required to have it. So, here's an interesting boat. I don't know this boat, MY Flying Dagger, but interesting because you can see the thrusters sticking out of the water there. Not whether you can see that. So the stand thrusters. Very nice. I have another video I posted not that long ago of a, a yacht trying to dock here in Monaco in a very short gap and you can see the thrusters in action. So on this boat, you, I'll show you, I can get quite close. On this boat, so they're basically the way the, if you wonder how people, do the security works, so they, the gangway is retracted uh, in the evening, usually, if, or uh, if there's nobody here. So if um, so someone comes to deliver something or somebody comes for some reason, they have this little system here, they ring the bell and it rings in the depending on where they, the way they've got it set up but it rings on the phone system and it'll ring maybe on the bridge in the crew mess or whatever it, the security is depending on the size of the boat if they've got dedica dedicated security they press this button here and it rings and then there's a they can talk to the person here out here and they'll say oh, i've got a delivery or whatever and then somebody can come out extend the uh, gangway and let them on or pick up the delivery or whatever it is you can see the ipad over there on the side on a little docking station there. I don't know whether you can see that. So that will be for controlling pretty much everything. Uh, air conditioning, lights, music, you know, uh, every, everything, every feature they've got out here. Maybe there's a television that pops out somewhere. <laughs> okay. So this is interesting. A catamaran, you don't see these very often. This is a 50 meter as well. That's a substantial size for this kind of vessel. I don't believe it's called uh, Endeavour 2. Is uh, They've set up these um, floating uh, walkways and, and it basically means you can walk right across the marina, which you can't normally do. These are not normally here. You normally need a boat to be out here, so that's quite good. I didn't even realise this was here. I was about to walk all the way around, so this is great. I think this might be from Holland. <laughs> so 
So there's another yacht with its toy on it. I'm not sure the name of the yacht yet, but I just wanted to point out the helicopter. It's a McDonald's Douglas. I'm not sure whether it's a MD-800, but it's an MD series, and, and it's famous for the, for the NOTAR, N-O-T-A-R, no-tail rotor. So it uses a type of thrust vectoring, uh, not unlike the type used on the Harrier. It uses thrust air, thr thrusting air through the rotor, uh, through where the rotor would be on the tail, and it pushes it in the opposite direction to the blades, and it changes as the helicopter moves around. So it was uh, developed by McDonnell, Dous McDonnell Douglas. I think they bought the technology, though. I think they bought it from uh, Hughes. When they bought Hughes, they took the technology, but they developed it into what it is today. Okay, so this boat with the helicopter is uh, it's called MY Minderella. I didn't know that. I've never seen this boat before. It's actually quite small for, for the type of boat I normally see with a helicopter on. It's 57 meters. So gross tonnage is 702, which is you know, not an awful lot. Built in 1986. Because the, the reason I say about the helicopter being on such a small boat is, is you go imagine that helicopter weighs a few tons. So you have to think about stability when the helicopter lands on board, especially if they sail with it on board. Sometimes smaller boats or even the bigger boats, they have a helicopter lands on board, drops the people off and then takes off again and goes and lands somewhere in an airport. But when they actually sell it on board, that has to be taken into account. Uh, when they build the yacht, they have to say, well, we're going to have a helicopter pad. We have to take into account stability and they have to make sure that all the trim tanks and the, st and the stability tanks are all properly accounted for. Otherwise, it can make the boat very top heavy. One of the things un that's unusual about this boat uh, legend here is it's got actual davit launched tenders you don't see that very often because it takes up quite a lot of space and also it's a pain in the butt when it comes to uh, obviously they're very heavy so it's again to do with stability also it means that davits have to be load tested uh, I'm not sure whether it's every year but they have to be load tested every s a set amount of time which involves getting a giant bag uh, connected it to the davit and then filling the bag with water till it gets up to its maximum loading uh, and that's a pain in the ass so uh, you don't see many boats with with, with these on and as you can see another one with a helicopter this is why they don't want us flying the drones not many of these helicopters have been flying actually today actually I haven't seen a single helicopter today but uh, I mean, I haven't seen a single helicopter in the air, should I say, because clearly there's one right there. This is a Robinson R22. Very light helicopter, non-turbo prop. Um, very, well, reasonably inexpensive compared to some of the uh, other helicopters here today. These, these are, that's an old design. It's been in service since like early 70s, I think. 79, I think? Or 73 or 79, I can't remember. But uh, it's, uh, it's an old design, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite popular. And it's, like I said, it's quite cheap, it's about $280,000. All Nice infinity pool there. Another, another uh, boat with a helicopter on it. NY Surrey. I've never heard of this one. It's got all its toys on. funny how you get all of this money and then strangely there's lots of hot women everywhere <laughs> a coincidence I'm sure crazy yachts so you can see these names that are on the uh, side on the canvas Fraser Ocean Independence 
These are, these are the names of the management companies that actually manage the yachts. Not the names of the yachts, you can see. That is big business now. Yacht management, huge. So I was filming uh, around the back of the boats and this, this boat here, Seven Sins, somebody came over and said, no photos, no photos. I said, well, I am pressed. They said, yeah, but they don't want any photos. I thought, how impossible is it to bring a yacht to a, a boat show like this and then tell everybody walking by they're not allowed to take photos? Absolutely ridiculous. See the, uh, the no photos uh, policies uh, going well. It's like five people taking photographs. <laughs> this is a, this is a interesting boat. This is MY Silverfast. I'm looking this up because I don't know this boat. I'm not familiar with it. But it's, it looks small, but it's actually 77 meters long. So it's uh, looks like it's built for speed. Maybe that's why it's called Silver Fast, eh? <laughs> Built 2015, 1,000 gross tons. Yeah, it's unusual to have a boat that long be that short. I'm sure he's got his reasons. It just the reason why I say that is because it obviously limits the amount of space the owner has. You see the three uh, life rafts on the side. That's what the, all the modern boats have: life rafts, not life boats. Obviously, they've got the tenders as well. In the event of emergency, uh, if if they can still launch the tenders and they have uh, rescue boats as well, they could they'd, they'd have all those in the water. Obviously, and the boss would be in one of those, boss and his guests. But that would definitely be for the crew. And believe it or not, inside of inside of that, which is obviously inflatable, uh, there is also food and water for 25 people for a number of days. I shouldn't know the days because it's part of your training, but I've forgotten. <laughs> Okay, so I just looked up this boat, uh, save you having to do it, and it is a, uh, it says it's a 77 meter, 252 feet. Uh, it was built in 2015, it's, it holds 12 guests. Um, it has a top speed of 29 knots. Now, that is fast for a yacht. It's funny because um, it's not fast for a ship as such. Uh, I mean, in, in its sense of history, because, you know, in World War II, uh, our destroyers could do 30 knots. So, uh, British destroyers, that is. So, um, it's not fast in that sense, but most boats are not built for speed, they're built for comfort. Um, so, this has got a cruising speed of 25 knots, which is, that is fast. It doesn't sound fast. It's about 30 miles an hour, 29, 30 miles an hour, but that is, that is fast to cruise at that speed. I doubt they do it very often. They probably, they might do it when the owner's on board, but they would not do it when, without the owner unless they needed to be somewhere for the owner, you know? Because um, the more, the, obviously the faster you go, the more fuel you use and, uh, and these things use a lot of fuel. And uh, talking about fuel, um, to fill up, well, not one of, I don't know about this boat because I don't know what size tanks it's got, but like the boats on the other side, the, the Jubilee 110 meter, to fill one of those boats up, to put it into perspective, to fill one of those boats up with fuel would cost you around, I would say probably between 180 and 210 thousand dollars. So it gives you an idea of the kind of money. If you think about that, think about supercars, how much a supercar costs, like the Lamborghini Huracan we saw before. So each time he fills up, he could buy a Huracan, or, or, or you know, close enough. So that's the kind of money that they're they pour into these things and a yacht of jubilee size 110 million uh, probably costs about 15 about 10 to 15 million a year to to keep to for the upkeep okay so when you get around this part of monaco this is where the big boys park anastasia and the you can get up to about a 100 meter yacht 
into there, actually, stand two. Uh, I used to dock there on a yacht, on previous yachts. So, but the really big yachts come here normally. Uh, this Martha Ann is not that big, actually, it's a 70 metre. I mean, you know, obviously it's all relative, but I mean, compared to the size of the yacht that normally parks, docks here. So, ordinarily, this is a cruise ship terminal, and uh, you, you do get yachts in here when the cruise ships are not in here, but usually they have to move out of the way for cruise ships coming in. But big yacht, like I'm talking big yachts, like Dilbar and uh, Eclipse and Motia A and Motia Serene, they would have to dock here. They couldn't dock anywhere else. So one of the things I said yesterday when I did my intro video was that I had full access. I just want to clarify exactly what that means. So I have full access to the event and I can go anywhere within the yacht show. It does not give me access to the yachts, unfortunately. Uh, I should have made that clear yesterday because uh, you might be expecting me to be inside yachts looking around. And then you can see people on board some of these yachts. They are getting shown around, but they've made appointments to do that. Or they, you know, some of them are brokers, the people who are trying to sell them, some of them, and then some of the people who are on board will be working for the owner of a boat that wants to buy it because he, he'll never come and see it himself, you know jobs like that you you hire somebody to do that so they'll they'll hire a broker the broker will come on uh do all that you know shoot a video maybe walk around take all the details um and actually the companies that are selling these things they they get professional production crews in to make videos and then they they'll put it on an ipad and they'll give it to the owner you know uh, and that's how they show them their, their stuff but um yeah but when it comes down to getting on the boats i mean that's a no-go still even though it's in a even though it's in a, a show like this, you still can't get access. So there's the there's the older boat I was talking about, uh, Legend, and you can see uh, the front. You can it, it looks old just from the front there, and you, actually on the on the deck there on the on the bow section you can see a submersible. Let's see if I can zoom in. about as far as I can go you can see that big glass dome that is a uh, that is a submersible <clears throat> I just want to talk about technology for a minute so you see up here on the on the mast you've got six domes you've got uh, at the very top you've got two very small domes they're like fleet 77 that's the MRSAT unit and they are very rarely used they're used for like um, if the captain needs to make a phone call uh, ship related search and rescue that kind of thing um, they very rarely use them they do have data capabilities but they're so expensive that nobody uses them unless it's an emergency so that's the failover but they've got prime position on the mast um, then below that you've got um, what I would imagine is two VSAT units so two internet units and probably forward of that you've got two TVROs so you will have um, the reason they have two, there's one on each side, you can't see one of them obviously, but there's one on each side, I think I went over this in a previous video, but they have that for redundancy because of, of the mast, blockage on the mast, so the, as the, as the uh, antenna is pointing up into space, uh, and as the ship turns, the antenna keeps tracking the stationary satellite, and then eventually the mast moves in the way, and then it, it can't see, it line, blocks line of sight. So then the other one takes over, but it's, it, it's, it's completely unnecessary unless you put them in those positions. You could have one of those at the top of the mast and then you wouldn't need any, you wouldn't need a second. But they constantly do this. This is a brand new boat and, they, and they've done it. So it's, it's, it, often it's to do with the architect who doesn't want to spoil his beautiful boat and he doesn't want to have a great big uh, golf ball at the top of the mast. So they have them lower down, but it just causes a lot of problems. Having one at the top with no blockage, absolute 360 degree clearance is always better than having two with a failover because the failover sometimes doesn't doesn't work and then you have uh, the internet drops out and then you get a phone call from the owner, he's unhappy because his internet's not working or his TV's not working or something's not working. So uh, they should just put one at the top for the internet, the internet is more important than the TV I think. Um, the TV ones are usually quite good actually. At uh, keeping their signal, but they do drop out. On my on a on a previous boat I worked on, 
they taught these the shipbuilders built a mast out of carbon fiber and told them that because uh, it was composite uh, the he wouldn't need a second antenna and he could put the first antenna behind the mast and it would just go straight through it which is complete nonsense they obviously never checked with anyone uh, and then what happened they built it they delivered it and then it didn't work so then they had to pay out of their own pocket to put a second antenna on the front of the mast so you know uh, this idea that you can build some sort of composite mast is ridiculous you can build it but it will not allow a signal for a satellite antenna to go straight through it There's a very nice shot inside the Jubilee in the stern section. That, like I said, that would normally be a tender garage, but obviously they've got that fully decked out. It looks like I can see water in there as well. It looks like they have a glass window into the pool. There's a glass window there at the top. Well, there's one boat here for, that I can say for certain isn't up for sale. And that's this police boat. <laughs> Interesting name for a police vessel as well. Vigilante. Okay, so it's the end of day one. Well, it's winding down, but I believe that uh, some of these yachts are having parties tonight. However, my invite uh, seems to have been an administration issue, so I don't have any invites for any of the parties. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave, go back to the hotel and do some editing and then uh, I'll be back again tomorrow to do it all over again. So I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope you've found it informative. Uh, if you anything you particularly want to see in a, in, a, in, a, in a future video, let me know and I'll try and incorporate it into the video after this one. All right, take it easy. So in the next video, we'll look at the more technical side of modern yachting and I'll talk to some of the exhibitors about their equipment.